Hey guys, welcome to all of you on our channel that is Achieve IES. So friends, as you know that on our channel we are targeting the exam of civil services and for that purpose we have started multiple series on our channel that target your prelims as well as mains. So in this video we will be talking about our mains answer writing series. Uh, so friends, uh, for the purpose of your mains, which is an important stage of your entire CSE examination process, uh, we have started a special series uh, that is daily mains answer writing series in which you are given a question of which you have to write the answer. So as students were demanding that please uh, also share the model answer of the question that you give to us so that we can uh, get an idea about the, uh, about, the, uh, uh, about the way in which we should uh, approach a particular question. That is how to deal with the directive of the question, how to deal with the demand of the question and how to write a beautiful or you can say model answer uh, in your words. So uh, seeing this demand we have started this series in which what we do we, de uh, we discuss with you daily one model answer uh, in a way this uh, discussion also covers your one topic from UPSC point of view. So uh, today's question is law commission of India suffers from several limitations what according to you, the, uh, to you these limitations are how could they be addressed. So the word limit here is 250 and the maximum marks are 15. So friends, uh, uh, this about this, let me tell you that uh, before starting that no answer can be a model answer because ev every answer has its pos positives and negatives. Had any answer been model answer, the UPSC would, uh, 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 the UPSC toppers would have scored 100% marks. But you see that uh, the toppers score marks between the range of 50 to 55%. So this uh, automatically answers your query that how can ans uh, a particular answer can be model answer. We are using this uh, uh, terminology because uh, the students use this terminology and just for the purpose of convenience we use it. But uh, this, uh, this terminology has no relation with the type of the answer. So better you should better call uh, any answer as the reference source. So also this uh, source which we are going to discuss is not a model answer so take it only as a reference source. So let's start our discussion friends uh, about the law commission of India. So as already uh, there is the, there the question is that it suffers from several limitations. So we have to uh, highlight what, what these limitations are. So before proceeding uh, you must answer that what is law commission of India. So uh, what are its functions and how it is constituted. So give a brief introduction about it. So here in, uh, in this answer we will be giving you a comprehensive uh, introduction, comprehensive structure and comprehensive conclusion. So that uh, you can uh, uh, appropriately adjust these uh, uh, comprehensive words into uh, we can say into small products so that you can write uh, an answer uh, within the word limit. So here we have not uh, uh, stuck to the uh, word limit because of the purpose so that uh, the topic is covered comprehensively. So Law Commission of India friends it is an ex executive body established by an order of government of India. So please note it, it is not a statutory or constitutional body but it is an executive body. So its major function is to work for the legal reform. So, uh, for example, there are many laws that are being under, uh, uh, many, uh, Parliament amends them and there are many articles that are discussed in newspapers about the legal reforms. So basically the purpose of law commission is to focus upon the legal reform that should be, uh, that could be brought into the legal, uh, uh, legal system of India. So its membership primarily comprises legal experts, so who are interested a mandate by the government. So it has no fixed maintain, mandate but, uh, but the mandate is entrusted by the government each time it is constituted. So it is basically an advisory body to the Ministry of Law and Justice. So uh, how this uh, law commission came into being? So basically uh, India before its independence was ruled by the British and uh, when they started ruling India, so they felt that there must be a common law because Indian uh, customs are very much different in each region. So they thought that there must be a common law so to, uh, in, in the territories governed by them. So in pursuance of this they decided to const they, they constituted various law commissions and in fact 18, in 1833 the three different presidencies were uh, brought uh, under the organized uh, centralized organize, uh, organization with the, the, with, the, with the presidency of Bengal as the 
sorry the governor of the bengal as a governor general of india so for that purpose uh, law reforms were undertaken so to undertake law reforms law commission was constituted so basically the purpose of it was to enforce uh, english common law in the whole of what they called british india so uh, they constituted law commissions and they submitted their various reports which paved the way for uh, for the common law in india so uh, after the fourth commission completed its working they sensed that uh, the british rulers sensed that there is a kind of possibility of uh, uprising and uh, they also felt the uprising for home rule so they then did not continue the exercise because they thought that it, it is not uh, good uh, for uh, for interference in the uh, social and cultural uh, habits of indians so in that context uh, 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 the then after fourth uh, law commission no such commission was constituted but uh, uh, after india attained independence after 8 years of it the government of india decided that there must be a law commission so that uh, there is a, uh, so that it can discuss uh, research, it can research upon report on the legal matters specif specified to it in the in the terms of reference given to it so now we uh, basically this is the uh, small introduction about law, law commission so you can reduce it uh, as by your convenience so surely you can't write so much uh, lengthy uh, uh, introduction but for the purpose of you people we have tr tried to cover it as uh, uh, we have tried to maintain it as uh, 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 we can say as wide as possible so that you can get appropriate uh, uh, conclusion from uh, this introduction so several limitations what are the limitations of the law commission so basically the limitations have been asked so first of all we must focus upon that uh, uh, the thing is that uh, it is the oldest uh, commission among the national level parastatal bodies but it remains an odd one even in its 65th year so why it is an odd uh, odd one even because uh, though it is the oldest national parastatal body but it uh, works only on ad hoc basis that it that is it has no uh, uh, fixed composition, no defined eligibility criteria for its chairman and members and no set functions that is what will be the functions of the commission so everything de depends upon the government's bill, will so you can see that uh, uh, this uh, renders law, law commission of India more, uh, more or less ad hoc body with no fixed composition, no fixed eligibility criteria, no fixed terms of reference and no fixed composition so all this uh, uh, renders it uh, at the will of the government and then there are also terms of reference are specified uh, uh, every time afresh when it is constituted reconstituted and this gives an impression that is it is an ad hoc body body so yes also it is an ad hoc body so uh, the problem is that uh, though this is the oldest commission commission <coughs> but it is still treated in a casual way so because uh, uh, there are other various commissions for example national commission for uh, scheduled caste backward class uh, caste Back, sorry, backward classes, uh, your, uh, and then your uh, National Commission for Scheduled Tribes, which are now regulated by constitution. And in fact, there are also various commissions, for example, NHRC, uh, your National Com uh, Human Rights Commission, your uh, National uh, Commission for Minorities, National Commission for Women, Children, all or are, are, are they, they are uh, uh, given statutory status under your parliamentary ch uh, charter. So the first human right, uh, first commission which was set up in 19, 1955, uh, it was constituted for uh, uh, three uh, three year term. So basically, uh, when it was constituted for three year term, uh, it was constituted in September one, uh, and uh, uh, then it worked for three years. So uh, August thirty one was the maturity date. So the, uh, it it was uh, dissolved of, uh, on August thirty one, and then after that uh, this uh, precedence uh, became popular and irrationally it was adopted uh, because uh, uh, every commission was then constituted for three year term, and uh, then uh, uh, it started working from first September and then it it it, it reached the maturity on thirty first August. So this uh, this was a irrationally adopted term. So what what effect does this have? The pro uh, the problem with th this is that sometimes the law commission is constituted not on the date but uh, quite later. But its uh, term remains for three years only. But so it enters in the office late, but uh, it works for only the remaining period. For example, if it co it is constituted one and a half years after uh, 31 August of a particular year, then it works for only one and a half year because already one and a half year of its term uh, would uh, it would have passed. So in that context, uh, then uh, obviously it 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 is unable to uh, uh, work for for 
we can say it's full term so the terms of reference uh, the, uh, the work given to it is also not fulfilled so because uh, uh, thus it leaves the assigned work halfway so this is also a wastage of resources wastage of uh, we can say money and also wastage of energy and uh, this this is also a less effective and efficient practice so also then there is uh, uh, other criticism is that the job uh, that is related to law commission is that uh, it requires research oriented juristic learning but the problem uh, is that uh, uh, the commission has been a kind of heaven for retired judges because uh, repeatedly the retired judges have been uh, have been inducted as the chairman of the law commission but uh, there is no such uh, criteria for the uh, for the appointment of retired judges because uh, the job requires research oriented juristic learning so obviously uh, in, uh, with the sole exception of fifth commission that was headed by a non judge that is first law secretary that is kv k sundram uh, the commission has always been headed by judges and also then there is issue of uh, report of the commission so reports are generally written by the individual members including the chairman and then they are discussed by all the members so uh, and then they are approved for the for the uh, for the adoption so quite a few of these reports have been on um, hindu and christian family laws but there is no such report on muslim personal law so uh, there is uh, nothing uh, difficult in having that muslim personal law related report but the thing is that uh, as uh, pointed out by then uh, a civil servant and politician mani shankar ayya who remarked that what faith will the minorities have in the pronouncements of an all hindu law commission so obviously this you can see that this is an issue of composition eligibility criteria so if, if a particular law commission if it is all hindu and if it is deliberating upon the muslim personal law and if it is releasing the report then obviously the muslim community will not have the faith on that report because obviously it will see that it is it was an all hindu law commission and there is no there is no uh, point of accepting this report so that is also an issue because uh, this uh, this brings into uh, play the faith issue uh, so if have we have proper representation of the muslim community or the minorities then uh, the the reports released by it or the proposals given by it can uh, give uh, more legitimacy to its uh, to its uh, propositions and then there is also other thing that uh, 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 that is highlighted that is 18th law commission which was 50% uh, uh, it it still didn't uh, enjoyed the faith uh, of the muslim community so three of the four uh, reports that was written by one member for the commission were criticized basically by muslim clerics that it is an indirect adverse effect on communities uh, supposedly sacrosanct law and one more law, uh, one more report that was written by that particular member uh, for the purpose of uh, uh, that that ha that had a direct bearing on muslim personal law uh, it was not approved by the chairman of that uh, 18th law commission uh, because of the fear of the backlash that it uh, that the chairman may face from the from that community so you can see that there are extra extraneous uh, pressures uh, and uh, political pressures and other other influences external influences which uh, which are hampering the functioning and proper uh, efficient working of the law commission so this is not a, a ground that is the, that uh, that the person will face backlash so obviously when the commission will enjoy a statutory status uh, uh, an autonomous status and a kind of authority then obviously such backlash backlash will not be there so also then over a month ago the media uh, reported that the cabinet will soon take a call on reconstituting the law commission so uh, 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 that this news was in uh, july uh, then but then lost uh, law, uh, law, uh, but then there is no further public information available uh, 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 on the on the on the progress in the matter so obviously the last commission that had gone out of the office was on uh, uh, august 31 2018 so obviously uh, today is 30 august uh, 2018 so obviously uh, one approximately one year has passed so obviously now the uh, the commission that will be constituted will work only for two years but the terms uh, but in that case the terms of reference given to it uh, the law commission will not be able to focus upon all these terms of reference because of, because of the uh, lesser uh, we can say tenure that that will be left with it so uh, then what should be done so the question is also about that what should be done so the simple thing is that uh, uh, the experience above shows that the commission has to work without regard for extra legal and political constitution considerations and for this to happen it must have a governing statute or a law defining its powers defining its responsibilities and what would be its limitations so before constituting 22nd law commission though the exercise is long overdue the institution must be placed under a proper parliament 
parliamentary charter so it must be uh, must be given a statutory status so that the act clearly defines its composition its working its uh, eligibility criteria of the members what will be the powers of this commission uh, how what will be the procedure and all these things must be clarified uh, in in that statute and also then it must be ensured that the continuity remains so that it it works uh, uh, for its full term and in an efficient way with with uh, 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 with complete and uh, most uh appropriate usage of resources and energy so the government of the day will do well to determine by legislation the composition tenure functions and work procedure of the law commission so friends this is all about your uh, today's discussion about uh, the model answer that is reference answer so uh, basically other thing is also that the pre uh, predominantly jurist commission uh, it must not be uh, must not become a retired judges collective so there must be jurists also with a sprinkling of uh, legal scholarship and jurisprudence uh, pr pr prudential expertise so friends uh, this is all about your today's discussion and if in case you are interested to join our daily mains answer writing initiative then and uh, want to get the model answers for all the questions then you can join using this link which will be available there also in the description box so what will be the benefits you will be getting daily one question for answer writing and on every sunday one full lunch test of the target topic uh, given to you for the week uh, will be taken so while uh, you will be attempting one full lunch test on every sunday uh, apart from getting daily one question so comprehensive evaluation of your answers will be given uh, done and uh, valuable feedback will be given and reference material relating to all questions will be shared with you so it is least costly because you can join on a monthly basis or on 30 day basis uh, and it is available to you in just rupees 199 per month or per, per 30 days better we call it so you can join so this link is shown on your screen and this link will also be available in the description box and lastly friends if in case you find it costly then you can also join uh, our initiative of rupees 4, 4, uh, 499 per month in which you will get daily one answer on daily basis uh, daily one question on uh, daily basis and uh, you will have to write the answer of this question and you will get it evaluated by us so on sundays you will be no uh, receiving no test in the, this in this uh, uh, a subscription of uh, rupees 499 but whereas uh, the, the full length test uh, facility uh, facility is available there in uh, the uh, the 199 per, uh, per month or per 30 days uh, course so if in case you are interested to join then you can use uh, uh, the link so sorry for that here the link has not been mentioned but the link will surely be provided in the description box for the for 499 per month course as well so if in case you are interested then do ensure that you uh, check the description box and join and uh, lastly friends if you like the question if you like the discussion if you like the topic then do ensure that you like it share it with your friends and also ensure that if you have any queries if you have any doubts you can uh, tell uh, you can ask us uh, the, all those queries in your comment box and also if in case uh, you want don't want to uh, pu uh, publicly comment then you can mail us at achieveies21 at the gmail.com or you can contact us at our uh, contact number that is 8968920720 if you have any further query so in this way you can uh, uh, you can join and you can discuss daily one topic with us and lastly if, uh, friends we also have a telegram channel and website uh, so you can join our telegram channel for the purpose of getting daily updates that we do on our channel relating to your entire CSE syllabus so uh, in that sense you can remain in touch with us so this is all about today's video do ensure that you like it share it with your friends and also ensure that you subscribe to our channel so thank you friends have a very nice day ahead